we're going to go through the flood. I figured it fit well with the gospel lesson and storms. Kind of a big storm. God sent the flood to destroy all mankind, true or false? That's true. That's well, except for Noah. But yeah. But yeah, that's, that was the, you're going to hear him say it about six times. Two, a worldwide flood is impossible. Apparently not. Yeah, it's good, Mike. Yeah, it happened. Three, there's no way Noah could fit all those animals in the ark. That's false. He did. You still have, you know, dogs and cats and everything else, too. All the big ones. Four, if God would have just given the people more time, they would have repented of their sins. No, that's false. Yeah, you're going to see here in the very next slide how much time they get, but that doesn't... Every inclination of the heart of man was evil before the flood, and unfortunately after the flood, it's still evil. And there's some parallels to life before the flood and how horrible it was, and now. So, yeah, but it's been bad for a while. All right, first few verses, Genesis 6, 1 through 3. I think the sound desk is ready for me. When men began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be a hundred and twenty years. Yes. How much longer did mankind have left? Last verse. 120 years, yeah. That's it. That's a long time to my way of thinking. I'm only 45, so I don't know people who complain that God didn't give them enough time. I mean, I know people live longer. You're going to see Noah's 600, but 120 years is a long time to kind of do anything. So, yeah. All right, Genesis 6, 5 through 8. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth, and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind, whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground, and birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. All right. Why did God send the flood? Just to be clear. To destroy mankind. Yeah, in case you were wondering. Yeah, that's why. What was different about Noah? This is Romans 1. For in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written. The righteous will live by faith. Yeah, and if you keep on reading in Romans, you have the condemnation over all of mankind. There's no one who does good, not even one. Like the quote from Isaiah. The point is the fact that Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord is because he had the righteousness that came along with faith. He was the last believing family. Which would, to me, answer the question, why did God send the flood at that time? God's like, well, we got one left. It's time. So, any questions about that? That's kind of a harsh thought. Genesis 6, 15 through 17. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish. Now, look at those dimensions for me. 450 by 75 by 45. And uh, I don't think I asked this question. Why do you think there was a gap of 18 inches at the top? 
Air. How did it smell in the ark? I mean, have you ever had a hermit crab in your house? Those suckers reek after about a month. Just in a little aquarium? Yeah, anyway. How big was the ark? Now, did the dimensions change? A little bit. Do you know, do you know what that is? Uh, K- Kentucky. Kentucky, Kentucky, yeah. Yeah, that is the Ark Encounter in Kentucky. That, I think this is Ken Ham's organization, right? Don't quote me. I, I don't, I've never been to the Ark Encounter. The point is, the numbers are different, and why is that? It depends on how big it is. For, first of all, did they use feet in the ancient world? No, what did they use? Cubit. Good job. So how long is a cubit? Yeah, that's right. My, it's, it's your, from here to here. So how long exactly is a cubit? Is my cubit longer than Emerson's cubit, my, or, or Faith's cubit? Yeah. Of course. It, it, so how exactly long is a cubit? Who knows? And I bet you if you're Noah, Noah used his own forearm. <laughs> it's like, well, that's how big mine is. That's how big we're going to make it. So, yeah, that's, that's why there's the discrepancy in some of that. But yeah, I, I need to go sometime. animal, a male and its mate, and two of every kind of unclean animal, a male and its mate, and also seven of every kind of bird, male and female, to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth. Yes. Now, why were there more clean animals on the ark? What are you going to say? Food and sacrifice. That's what I was going to say is worship. Yeah. Yeah, but that's possible. Because they were, they were Jews. They ate kosher. And so that, that, that's one thing is that. And this is where some of it's fuzzy because Noah's way before Moses, obviously. And you have all that kosher dietary stuff codified. And yet there was an understanding already, obviously. And so maybe that was the sacrifice of the clean and, and, and the unclean. That's, that's what people think. So that's why two by two, except for the clean... But when you buy the um, Playmobil set of the Ark, they don't give you extra clean animals. So, anyway, we'll keep going. In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened, and rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. All right, describe verse 11. In your own words. Somebody said, how, how did God cover the whole world with water? Well, I, so, miracle is a good answer. But logistically speaking, how, how could this have very re- really happened? Like, it is not, there are physics involved in all that, but it's very possible to cover the whole earth with, with water. came up from the ground, and for the first time possibly ever in the history of the world, it rained. The firmament, you've heard of this in the King James, the canopy theory, how there was a full world greenhouse effect. You didn't have a northern climate and a southern climate. It was uniform. It was a good greenhouse effect. And that could also explain why people live longer, because it blocked a lot of the UV light that goes and makes people age. Finally, people just live longer. We don't exactly know why, but yeah, that's, that's why. So, all right, last one. First Peter 3, what does God say the name, what does God say the same water that destroyed the world in the flood does for us in baptism? This is First Peter. Who disobeyed long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. In it only a few people, eight in all, were saved through water. And this water symbolizes baptism that now saves you also. Not the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God. 
Yeah, what is, what is exactly that saves in baptism? It's the water attached with God's promise, obviously, in baptism. But yeah. That is what saves you. And um, we've been doing baptisms a lot lately, which is awesome, but it's pretty cool. Any questions? So this is, this is the front end of the flood. Next Sunday, we're going to be talking about the back end, how it ends, how the water recedes, how God keeps to get the promise of a rainbow in the sky, how God will never send a worldwide flood again. But Any questions on this first half of the flood? All right. Seeing none, please say this prayer with me. Jesus, Savior, wash away all that I've done wrong today. Make me ever more like you, good and gentle, kind and true. Amen. Incidentally, that is a great prayer to say with your kids at the end of the day. And um, Nate's not busting on his violin. I was going to see if he could play it. That's okay. No, it's all right. No, that's a hint. He wasn't picking it up. All right, there are no other announcements. May God give you all a blessed week.